Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharajas. Thank you so much for your kind association today on Bhakti Sangha Japa Conference Call, Maharaj. And we will continue today from our Canto 7 of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 1, uh, Chapter 1, Verse Number 2. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you can take the call over. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Naya Sarta Suraganai Taksan Nire Shreya Satmanaha Naiva Surebhyo Vidveso no duegas Chanuganasya he Lord Vishnu himself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the reservoir of all treasure. Therefore, what benefit would he derive from siding with the demigods? What interest would he fulfill in this way? This Lord is transcendental. Why should he fear the Asuras? And how could he be envious of them? We should always remember the distinction between spiritual and material. That which is material is affected by material quality. These qualities cannot touch that which is spiritual or transcendental. Krishna is absolute, whether he is in the material world or in the spiritual world. When we see partiality in Krishna, this vision is due to his external energy. Otherwise, how could his enemies attain salvation after being killed by him? Everyone who deals with the Supreme Personality of Godhead gradually acquires the qualities of the Lord. The more one advances in spiritual consciousness, the less he is affected by the dualities and material qualities. Supreme Lord, therefore, must certainly be freed from these qualities. His en enmity and friendship are both features presented by the material energy. He is always transcendental. He is absolute, whether he kills or bestows his favor. Envy and friendship arise in one who is imperfect. We fear our enemies because in the material world, we are always in need of help. The Lord, however, does not need anyone's help. For he is Atmarama. The Lord says in the Bhagavad Gita, Patram Pushvam Falam Toyam Yomi Bhaktya Prayachtiti Taraham Bhaktyuparitam Asnami Prayatatmanaha. If a devotee offers me with devotion a little leaf, flower, water, or fruit, I shall accept it. Why does the Lord say this? Is he dependent on the offering of the Lord? He is not actually dependent, but he likes to be dependent upon his devotee. This is his mercy. Similarly, he does not fear the Asuras, thus there is no question of partiality in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sri-chaitanya-mano-bhistam-stapitam-nena-bhutalam. Sri-radha-krishna-padam. Sahagana. Lalita Sri Visha Kam Vitams Cha Mao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nuti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve 
Gorvani Pacharine Yurisesa Sunya Vari Pasyatya de Sutarine. Panchikalpa to Rubis Chakri Pasindu, Pay Bachapatitanam, Pavane Bio, Vaishnavi Bio Namahona Maha. Tapta Kanchana Godan Girad, He Brindavane Shuri, Vishabanu Suti Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye, Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya, Arunityananda. Sri Advaita Gadat Har Srivasani Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Samoham Sabhavute Shuna Medvesa Sthinapriya uh, I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I'm equal to everyone. The one who renders devotional service is a friend, and in in I am a friend in him. So, um, also, he qualifies that point even more because people think Krishna is partial. And they see how things are happening, and they see he favor, it seems like he's favoring one, and uh, he's not uh, favoring in someone else. He seemed to be dualistic, but that's from their that's from their external point of view, and they're seeing the activities of the material energy, but not Krishna himself. Krishna sets the material energy in motion as he develops the transcendental as he develop, develops the material energy. He expands himself into those different. But all that's done through his different energies, Parashi Shakti Vidhaya Suyate Swabhavaki, Jnana Balakriya Cha. So things are happening by his energies, and he puts the energies accordingly. So for the material energy, there are three categories goodness, passion, and ignorance. And those who are vicious, licentious, and and greedy. And they are affected by the lower qualities of the monks. One is a little bit better, who is very enthusiastic for material gain and material happiness. Uh, they are a little bit better. They are in a mode, mode of passion. And those who want to do good to others and live a very peaceful life, uh, they are called sattva or the mode of goodness. Now, people are getting their different reactions to their activities according to the different modes. But it's not that Krishna is partial and giving some punishment and others some reward. It's just like the judge. The judge is on the stand and he hears the case. And based on the evidence, he makes his decision. But the evidence is the foundation by which he gets his decision made. And of course, there are many aspects to that but ultimately he's not partial even though he's awarding a million dollars to someone and sending others to jail still he's equal because it's how that different living entities are acting but krishna also says in the bhagavad-gita so as they approach him he responds accordingly. And him, in this sense, he means material energy. But Krishna is neutral in the sense that he, he is not a uh, cause of anyone's happiness and distress. Material energy is because people plug in the material energy according to their different desires and according to the quality of the desire, a certain activity will be with an unfold and by based on that activity a certain result com comes accordingly so everything is there within the material energy and it's put in place by krishna himself but he is not awarding anyone happiness and distress it's through it's through the energy it's like if a person goes to jail the jailhouse is also the uh, arrangement of the state but in the jailhouse there is less freedom or hardly any freedom and one is subjected to various types of 
punishment. You can't say that the state is uh, punishing some and letting others free. It's according to the activities of that, of the particular. For one who takes shelter of Krishna and engages in devotional service, they get the, they get the direct mercy of the Lord. Because on the spiritual level, the living entities are connecting with Krishna directly through his personal spiritual energy, the Daivi Shakti, the Parashakti, and not the Aparashakti, I mean, not the Aparashakti, which is the material energy. So everything is done. And although people see partiality in God, it's like there was one book that was written many years ago. Why do bad things happen to good people? And uh, this was this book was a response to seeing in the world um, how apparently good people were getting uh, inauspicious uh, activities forced upon them. In other words, they were suffering. Uh, the book came out by a rabbi. The rabbi had a son who was born with a very rare disease called progeria, uh, which takes one through the one's life cycle very quickly. So this boy, the son of the rabbi, uh, went through his whole life cycle in 14 years, and he died of old age. And so the uh, father, the rabbi, he was thinking, how how is it that this innocent boy had to undergo this type of suffering? What did he do? And his conclusion was, because uh, people were always debating this thing, is God fair? Is he unfair? Why is he rewarding some? Why is he punishing others? So the, it was a theological debate. It still goes on in many circles today. But this rabbi concluded that God is good, but he's not all powerful. And therefore, although you're a good person, sometimes you find yourself in difficulty and God is not there to help you because he has too many things to do. And uh, somehow, sometimes he misses something. And therefore, it's unfortunate that that person becomes neglected because God is really overwhelmed with everybody's desire. And therefore, he uh, doesn't get things done properly. He's a, he's a bad manager <laughs> or an incompetent manager. So this book explained that. And then it became a bestseller. Oh, now we know why. Well, yes, God is good. We can't blame God. But somehow or other, he's just not there every time you need him. And so that became what was accepted as the answer. And uh, But then we wrote a response. The ISKCON Society wrote a response to that and said, uh, bad things don't happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. But one cannot see how the living entity trans, transgresses from one life to another and what they've done in previous lives based on their activities sometimes it fructifies not only in the same life but in, in the, it fructifies in later lives so not only we put out the whole idea of reincarnation that the soul is getting the results of its activities in different bodies at different times, just like the example was given in the Mahabharata where Peter Rastra, after losing the battle, losing all of his son, he uh, approached Krishna. He said, my dear Lord, uh, I was born blind. I had a hundred sons and they all died in the battle. Can you tell me what my karma was? And Krishna responded, he said, yes, uh, 50 lives ago, you were a hunter. You shot a flaming arrow into a nest of birds. There were 100 birds in the nest. 
All the birds died because of the fire, but the mother bird escaped and she was blinded by the fire. So Dhritarashtra was quite astonished. And then he asked the next logical question, why 50 lives? And Krishna said, it took you 50 lives to develop enough good karma to have a son or a hundred sons. And after your good karma came in, and therefore you had a hundred sons, and then the karma collected, and therefore you had to lose that, and you also had to be blind. So this is how karma works. Nobody can see the hands of the karma because it works. It's it's very subtle, and it works under the under the control of the material energy directly. And so, um, but people still like to blame God. Sometimes they say, oh, when things go well, they say, oh, because, well, that's because I did everything right. And everything is, I understood now how to do things. Things went well. I'm happy. But then things go wrong. They say, well, why did God allow that to happen? You know, he knows everything. And he knows what I'm going to do. And still, he could have prevented me from doing it, but he didn't. The why, these, what does he have against me? And so you get all of this kind of, uh, you know, ignorant speculation. And therefore, people don't worship God. But the devotee knows that whatever happens is under the influence of the material energy, and for those who take shelter of devotional service, they're under the control of the daivi, prakriti, the spiritual energy. And Krishna doesn't interfere with the material energy because it works according to a certain way. Just like the state sets up the prison house, and the prison house has to work in order to punish those who are deviant, not following the laws of the state. So in the same way, those who live in the material world and live a sinful life or a deviant life, they get they they suffer because of that. You can't blame God because God teaches you how to live. He says, you know, take shelter of me. And then Prabhupada ends this purport by giving that point. One who offers me a leaf, flower, fruit, and water, I'll accept. I bring them closer to me in devotion. But be, because, because people don't worship the Supreme Lord, but still expect the benefits of the Lord, therefore they are very critical of God, and sometimes they become atheists. And in fact, many people who have become atheists are atheists because some of them had faith or some belief in God, but they had certain requirements and expectations that God should fulfill. And when God doesn't do that, then they say, well, there is no God. And then they, they become agnostic or atheist. But God works according to his own plan, which is perfect. We have to understand the plan of God and not that we have to adjust, try to adjust God's plan for us. That is not intelligent. God is the supreme controller, supreme creator, supreme uh, uh, benefactor. Everything is there. He is perfect in all sense. And he gives the blueprint. Surrender unto me. I'll give you all protection. Do not fear. Do not worry. Do not hesitate. And that's the end of the Bhagavad Gita, he says. So those who do not surrender and expect to get the mercy of God at the same time, are foolish, just like those who disobey their parents and expect the parents to give them all of the things they want at the same time. It's ridiculous. So the material energy is there to rectify the wrong activities of the living entity through the, the, through the activities of punishment to wake them up by that form of punishment that whatever they're doing is simply causing them unhappiness and suffering. But devotees know 
that God is good, God is perfect. And even sometimes when devotees experience some reverses or some suffering, they pray to the Lord. That, uh, my dear Lord, you put me into this difficult situation, and now I am suffering. But I can see that the suffering that you arranged for me is actually just a small token of what I actually deserve. Actually, I deserve much worse, but because you are so merciful, you only give me a small token. And then the verse ends, Mukti Padesha Dayabak. One who prays like that actually becomes qualified to enter into the kingdom of God. So God is good, God is perfect, and everything he does is in line with the benefit of the living entities. If he kills the demons, that is good for them. It stops their demoniac activities and, appear, and they get some mercy by being killed by the Supreme Lord. So, um, therefore, he is, he is called the, the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities. And so here, as Sir sometimes it's, here it says, why is he taking the sides of the demigods? Because the demigods are his devotees. And therefore, they, they take shelter of him. And therefore, he, he assists them because demigods are put into place by the Lord to manage the universal affairs, their managers. And they also can give material benedictions. And so they work under the guidance of the Lord to help fulfill the purpose of life through the material energy. And so uh, when the demigods find themselves in trouble because of the demons, they take shelter of the Lord and the Lord uh, does something. Just like we just recently celebrated the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vamanadev. It was because that the demigods lost their kingdom in the heavenly planet due to offenses, that Bali Maharaj, due to his worship of his, his guru, Sukaracharya, he was the king of the demons, were, became powerful and overtook the heavenly planets. And not only that, the material planets everywhere, the entire universal creation, uh, was the, under the control of the demons headed by Bali. But then, what to do? So, uh, uh, Aditi, who was the mother of the demigods, she approached her husband, Kishapa, for some solution. And he gave her a sacrifice, a vrata, called Peo Vrata sacrifice, that she should perform. And she would get a child that would bring back the demigods in their rightful position. And that was Vamanadev. So uh, these are examples how the Lord will not, he is partial, he's impartial, he's not partial, but according to how one approaches him, there is a reciprocation accordingly. So in our devotional service, uh, we have to have faith that whatever the Lord allows or does is simply beneficial when we engage in devotional service, we have to know, even if things don't go according to the way we want, still there's a reason for that. There may, the reason may also be for purification of our attachment to the results of activities, or may to give us some knowledge of the process of bhakti, or ultimately it may help us become more dependent on the Lord when we engage in act various activities. But whatever he does is good. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for putting all this so simply. That whatever he does, he does it for good. Whatever good happens to us, it's with his mercy. And whatever we do wrong, it's really our karma. And we could have had so much more wrongdoing done, done to us if it was not for his mercy and giving you know the huge punishment into such a small one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. 
for the wonderful class. Um, devotees, do you have any questions? Please don't hesitate to go ahead. I see the hand of uh, Shiv Kumar Prabhu. Would you like to go ahead and ask your question, please? Unmute yourself, Prabhu. Yes, um, Ajay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Nandavan Params Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, question from today's class. How do we understand Lord's impartiality uh, against this uh, Bhagavad Gita Sloha Maharaj from 18th chapter 14th verse, where it talks about the five uh, causes of any act, and of which Daivam Chaivatra Pancham, uh, where the Lord is the fifth factor. Well, nothing happens without his sanction. Therefore, he is one fifth of all activities. So ultimately, according to the quality of acting, action, along with the other three ingredients, which are the endeavor, the time, the circumstance, ultimately one gets a reaction accordingly. And he is giving that reaction through the material energy. When we when those who work under the modes of material energy, but when uh, one is engaged in devotional service then the results of the devotional service are not under the influence of karma or the quality of activity. They're, un they're under the influence of the daivi prakriti. Yes. And therefore, the activities are ultimately bring one closer to Krishna. So whatever activity you perform in devotional service is meant to purify you and bring you closer to the, uh, uh, bring you more fixed on the path of devotional service. The Lord is, he's awarding the results accordingly, based on our desire. So he situated this fifth, fifth part is, is Antoyami, it's the super soul. The Lord is situated in the heart of all living entities. Nothing, either spiritual or material, can, ha can, can carry on without the sanction of the Lord, either directly or indirectly. So he's not partial. Mm -hmm. But if he wants to show partiality, he can. And he does that sometimes. But it, mm -hmm. it's not partiality. It's his way of showing mercy accordingly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes one, one cannot see the whole picture many mm -hmm. times. And the Lord, although a person is not at all qualified, they get a very nice result, even though they make, they do the, the activity or wrong or they might receive some mercy from the lord some favorable because the lord the lord can do that he sees a picture he wants to give mercy special mercy to someone that's his prerogative he can do that <laughs> because not everything is dependent on activity everything in spiritual life everything and things are dependent on co consciousness so he may be awarding the consciousness and not so much the activity. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Prahladananda Prabhuji, would you like to go ahead, please? Thank you very much, Mataji. And then what Pranam Maharaj? I don't have a question, but uh, I have a little reflection. What uh, Brahmaji is praying in Brahma Sahita, he says, Yasvindra Gopam Matvendra Mahusu Karma, Bandhanu Phal Bhaja Matanoti, Karmani Nirlahati Kintuja Bhakti Bhajam, Govinda Mahadi Purusham Bhavan Krishna is so merciful that those who worship him, those who do the devotional service, he can burn off all the Karmani Nirlahati Kintu Bhakti Bhajam. So he's clearly fav favorable to the devotees. That, that is what is my understanding. So, well, he says that he also says that in the Gita, one who one who renders devotional service is a friend, yeah. and I am a friend in him. Right. Some of them are yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. And so that that he is the friend he's yeah. saying, but he also says, he also says, Suhidam Sarvabhutanam. Yeah, I'm the friend of all living entities. Right. He's simply awarding 
the type of how people are approaching him. That's yeah, he says that. Yeah, yeah, come on, Prabhupada, and then that's the yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maharaj. Very nice discourse. Thank you. Very well. Thank you. So Maharaj, as you were saying, um, of course, he's Paramatma, so he knows all the desires in the heart. So whether if it's a devotee, maybe he'll be partial and not fulfill the desires that are not correct for the devotees. However, if you are not a devotee, will in, when the moment the desire arrives in the heart, does the Paramatma immediately starts to work towards it to fulfill it? Not necessarily. He may also dictate. He's dictating in the heart too how one should should act. He'll say, "Don't do this," or "Do something else," or "Do it differently." But only when you only when your mind and senses are completely control, as it mentions in the uh, on the um, seventh verse of the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita then one can hear super soul but therefore how they hear super soul is to take shelter of the spiritual master and get guidance from the spiritual master because the spiritual master is giving you exactly what super soul is saying within the heart but when you're advanced then you can hear krishna in the heart but until we reach that certain level of spiritual attainment we may have we we have to hear Externally, from his representative, the spiritual master. Thank you, Maharaj. What was the exact verse you said from chapter six in Bhagavad Gita? Verse number seven. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. One whose mind, all the one whose mind and senses are controlled, the super soul is already reached. For him, happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, heat and cold, are all the same. He doesn't experience duality because he's above duality. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Just like Prabhupada would say, uh, people who say this is good and this is bad, Lord Chaitanya actually responded. Okay, some people say this is good and this is bad, but I must actually say that everything in the material world is bad. Because it, it's meant to lead you away from your actual goal of life, which is devotion to the Lord. So even in the mode of goodness, which, which is the, the qualities that good people aspire for in the material world, is ultimately bad because it gives you the idea that this is success in life. So... That's why Prabhupada said piety and impiety is all the same. It's all impious because it's material. Anything yeah. material is considered to be something that will take us away from Krishna. Everything spiritual brings us closer to Krishna. And spiritual means devotional service. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for helping me with this question. We have a question from um, Disha Disha Mataji. She says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tandavat Pranam. How can we increase our love towards Krishna if and if see Krishna then if we couldn't see, then we can separation. One second, let me just try to read it properly. How to grow? So her main question is how to grow in Krishna consciousness. So, and she's saying, because we do not see Krishna, how can we actually increase our love towards him? He's there. You just go to the temple. You, you can see him. He's there in his deity form. That's Krishna. Not a statue. That's Krishna manifest himself in his form in order to give the, to accept worship and give himself personal darshan to his devotees. And you can see Krishna. And there's another way to see Krishna is to see to see everything in relationship to Krishna. If you connect, if you disconnect anything from Krishna, that's material. If you connect everything to Krishna, 
and spiritual. So everything in the material world is the paraphernalia of the material energy, which is created by the Lord. Of course, we create our own paraphernalia when we take the Lord's energy and then manipulate it and make our own devices in order to increase our happiness in the material world. But even that, all the ingredients that are needed in order to do that is coming from Krishna anyway. Everything is within Krishna and everything is controlled by Krishna through the various, his various energies. So you can see him in that way too. Just like maybe you want to do something and you make your plans and everything seems to be in place, but something comes up and just spoils the whole thing and it doesn't happen. So you could say, oh, well, that was Krishna. He didn't want it to happen for whatever reason. Then you think, why? Why didn't he want it to happen? And then you, many times you can come to some kind of conclusion based on that. Materialists can't understand these things. They think you just have to perfect your own endeavor and everything will work out accordingly. You have to find the secret. So they're all trying to discover more and more secrets because all of their previous secrets didn't work. Now, if you listen to the materialists now, they have more and more ideas on how you can succeed in this world, how you can remain healthy, how you can overcome suffering. And they write books, they come up with new formulas, and, and they're thinking these are these are the solutions that we couldn't find in the past, but now we have so, now we're so advanced we've got it. But the problem is that um, anything in the material world is subject to the three modes of material nature, and the modes will give you the reactions according to your activity. Just like they're killing cows like crazy, in different slaughterhouses, and at the same time they want peace in the world. It's impossible, completely impossible. You're killing innocent animals, you're committing sinful activity, and then you talk about peace. <laughs> it's completely contradictory. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, one quick question. So as you were saying, the desires can be heard, um, directed, not directed, etc., by the Paramatma. Can Maya Devi also pretend, I mean, can she also hear what we have, the desires in our heart? And can Maya she pretend to be Maya from Devi's, Krishna? Maya Devi is Krishna's agent to, to help you become more Krishna conscious if you're a devotee. Your devotee sees an agent, agent of Krishna to uh, help you through different experience what Krishna wants and what Krishna doesn't do. She gives you the reactions of your activities. <laughs> she is the personification of the material energy. She comes in the form of Durga Devi and many of the other forms of the, of the uh, external energy. She is the wife of Lord Shiva. And she's simply, uh, she's working in such a way as to fulfill your desires to enjoy in the material world. But for a devotee, she gives you also the understanding that this is not right. She's our friend. Maya is the friend of the devotee. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. We have one more question from Shiv Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. One more question, if time permits. While pure devotees accept suffering as Krishna's mercy, is there a way to perceive that way at sadhaka stage? I mean, he's asking if you're not fully a devotee, if you're in the practicing stage, should we? is there a way we can perceive that situation too? Well, we get our knowledge. There's two ways. We realize knowledge or we hear from the realized person. The first stage is to hear from the realized person. 
which is the spiritual master, Krishna, Krishna through the scriptures. So the perception will be theoretical, but it's still correct. So we have to hear from those who know. Therefore, reading the books, hearing the lectures, we understand, oh, this is what's happening. This is why it's happening. And then once you practice devotional service effectively after some time, you can start to see your knowledge goes from theory to realization. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. The theory still is the foundation by which we act or don't act. We avoid this, we do this. And those theories arise from our sanskaras, right, Maharaj? No, these 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 are these are philosophical theories that come from the books, come from the guru. The perception of it may be uh, different according to the individual, but that is due to how much they can assimilate the knowledge and understand it. That's why we have to hear over and over again. Chant the holy names of the Lord. <laughs> How many times do we hear this? It's not like it's said once and then that's the end. It's said continuously over, along with the benefits that one receives by that. Avoid illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating, and gambling. It tells you why you should avoid it. It brings one into the simple lifestyle and causes one to suffer. So everything is there. Given, everything is given to us by Guru, Shadu, and Sashra. Yes, thank you so much, Maharaj. Sri Devi Mataji, would you like to go ahead with your question, Mata? Thank you, Nina. Dear Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisance to all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, there is so much killing going on in this world, so much suffering uh, being caused to animals at so many levels. But yet, uh, if we point out that why you're killing animals for food, they say it's there in our scriptures. In the Bible, the father, when the prodigal son returned, he was overjoyed and he said, bring out the fatted calf and kill him for the feast. My son has returned. Or Jesus, uh, you know, what is that fish and loaves business and so on. So they say, you know, there's nothing wrong because it's in our scripture. We can eat all these things. So you believe that? No. <laughs> I want to know how to combat this kind of uh, talk where they very confidently came, claim that no, it's not sinful. This there in our scriptures, we have examples, and that's why we are doing it. It's not simple. It also says in the Bible, whatever you do to the least of my kingdom, you do unto me also. That's also it says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. It also says that. So you have to take things within the context. But ultimately, there, there are principles that are general. Why do we avoid killing? Because killing is sinful. All living entities are meant to live their life according to the arrangement of God. If you're interfering with that, then you are interfering with the uh, law of God or the arrangement of God. And that's sinful, and therefore you'll suffer. So there are certain karma khandas or certain uh, various ritualistic ceremonies that are mentioned in scripture, but they're under guidance of, of certain principles, rules, and regulations. But basically, in, in, in the age of Kali, these things don't apply. That's why Buddha came to stop all of this stuff. 
Because in the age of Kali, people will take scripture and use it for their own sense gratification. Not understanding the purpose behind it. Thank you, Maharaj. Darshini Mataji, you have a question? Thank you so much, Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanvat Pranams, Dr. Rishashita Prabhupada. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Maharaj, my question is that, uh, you know, sometimes there comes a phase when, you know, spiritually we are very dumb and all the limbs of devotional, uh, devotional service is happening only mechanically and there is a tendency in the mind to do non-Krishna conscious activities due to lowering of consciousness. Although we try to not act on it, but the tendency is regularly disturbing the mind. So what should one do at this point of time if we are bereft of physical association of devotees? Get some help. <laughs> Call out to Krishna, my dear Lord, help me, save me from my own wrong, wrong mindset. Or talk to your friend who is also a devotee, get some support. If you try to conquer it alone, you might be overwhelmed. That's why we have the association of devotees to not only to do things together, but to support each other when we're in times of crisis. So if you try to solve it yourself, there's no guarantee you will. Mm -hmm. so, when it becomes that severe, many times we need to talk to someone, get some help, talk to the spiritual master or someone who is on the same level as the spiritual master, explain the situation, get some clarity, get some guidance. But when we feel ourselves going down, the best thing to do is just chant. That will overcome a lot of the problems. If we just sit down in an extended period of time and chant the holy names, then all of these things will gradually dissipate. Papa writes this, that when you find yourself in these situations, where you've lost your enthusiasm and everything is going down, so just sit down and chant. But not just a little bit, chant continuously, and then you'll feel your consciousness is coming back. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maharaj, thank you so for this much, wonderful. Maharaj. Yeah, a very, very wonderful answer. Very, very heart touching answer, Maharaj. Thank you. Devotees, feel free to unmute your videos so Maharaj can look at you and bless you. <laughs> <laughs> this is comedy hour now. <laughs> Take all the blessings that you can. Let Maharaj glance at all of you. <laughs> Any, any I'm last minute questions? A, I'm glancing at a lot of names and a lot of people. Hare Krishna Maharaj. It's a wonderful presence. It's all glorious to Shiva. All glorious to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Wonderful class. Uh, Maharaj, uh, today is uh, um, Shila Haridas Thakur's disappearance day. So I was remembering your Haridas Thakur detail. Uh, there is this noise coming from the background. Yeah, and there is uh, some problem in my computer. Oh. <laughs> you have to bear with me. But I can't, it's disturbing that you can't really do anything. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I yes. can hear you. Okay, turn your thing off. <laughs> um, um, most of you, many of you are living in the United States, right? Most of you right now. So I, I have a little uh, news for you, if you want to take advantage of it. These are mostly for people in the United States. Uh, there is a program going on in the uh, 
the uh, Farmington Hills Temple in Michigan. It starts today and it goes on for three days. They're going to be chanting 64 rounds together. All the devotees are going to assemble together and chant 64 rounds today, tomorrow, and Saturday for three days. They're going to do 192 rounds. So if you're in the area or if you want to make a, an endeavor to take a little break this weekend, you know, jump on a plane or a train and go up to Farmington Hills and uh, take part in this. I, I mean, it's really powerful. If you if you attend this program, when you come out, you'll think, where am I? Is this the spiritual world? <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, I would recommend anyone who can who can make some effort to go, please go because you can join in with the rest of the congregation. There's a nice congregation there, a very enthusiastic congregation. I go there when I'm in the United States. Um, so um, all you have to do to go to, to the Farmington Hills Temple and take part in the program. I'm not sure when it starts. Probably started probably early this morning. I don't know if it's going to be online. And that you have to find out. <clears throat> but anyway, you can uh, celebrate Harry Das Thakur's Disappearance Day. <laughs> but of course, we can hear about Hari Das Thakur and we can chant more and more. Also. Yes, Maharaj. That's what you know. You know, I wanted to hear from you about Sri Hari Das Thakur because you worship him so nicely every day. Yeah. I gave a class this morning, and I'm here in Ujjain in India. So I gave a class here at the class in the temple this morning on Shila Haridas. Now, Corey, you can probably get the get the uh, recorded lecture. Yeah, sure, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming in the call. We missed you last time. <laughs> it's almost a month we see you. Saw you on the call. Yeah, so I should be regular now for the next few months. Let's see. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Mama. Nice to see so many devotees. Hey, there was up to sixty-five people were here today. Thank you, Mara. It's so wonderful to see you back again. It's so nice to see you. We miss you so dearly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maharaj, for your association. I'm useless. <laughs> then we are. We don't know where we fall. <laughs> Maharaj, if you say that. You're, you're showing mercy to the useless. That's for you. No, Maharaj, what are you saying? Maharaj? It's going to incur sin to us if we... <laughs> the devotees, any questions? Any last minute questions for His Holiness? Maharaj, any few last words you would like to say to this? Hemi hey, Mataji, I see. Would you like to go ahead and ask your question, yeah. Mata? Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj, Dhanvat Pranam. I missed some of your class, but I have a question about um, this enviousness. So we, I have at least. So um, I, I feel that like intermittent, even though we hear so much, it, it does not really go away. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't go away instantly anyways. But uh, in my mind, I know it's not, it needs to be controlled. So I, I'm trying to do that. But slowly, slowly, does, do people come to a point when these things don't even pop up in the head? Well, envious, enviousness is the original sin, causes the fall from the spiritual world, and then we carry that same mood amongst each other. But there are some 
antidotes that one can apply. One is to serve the Vaishnavas by serving the Vaishnavas, especially those who feel envy towards a certain person, then offer some service to that person. That's one way. Another one is just a, a, a basic conscious that Krishna is giving everyone whatever they deserve. So why should you be unhappy with what you don't have or what they have? That ultimately Krishna is perfect and whatever is happening is his arrangement. So we learn the principle of satisfaction. Whatever I am, and just be satisfied with that. Don't try to be something different or feel unhappy because you don't have something or feel uh, happy because you think you're better than others. These are all material qualities that keep us in, in, the, mo in the lower modes of material. So satisfaction. And devotional service is meant to bring satisfaction. But practice satisfaction anyway. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Don't pronoun. I both. Thank you. Good question. Maharaj, anything you would like to let us know on this auspicious day? Don't let Lalita speak. Lalita Mataji. Don't let her talk. She's going to say something. <laughs> you can just scratch her off the list. Please accept our humble obeisances, Maharaj, on behalf of all the devotees. Uh, we would just like to tell your heartfelt gratitude. There is no words. But it's our. Um, yeah, yeah, we don't have words, but we can uh, just offer our respectful obeisances and remain indebted for your valuable association and mercy and that you are giving us, and also very tolerant. And we pray to you that we might um, we may be able to follow in the of your examples and and. Uh, Reach to pure devotional service. Well, you have many examples to follow. And you're definitely one of them who's close to us, Maharaj. Yeah, I tell jokes every once in a while. People like that. That's about it. <laughs> You know, Prabhupada has given us the whole formula of how we can be. I mean, Prabhupada went out of his way to explain, not only to give, but to explain, to give examples, and even to personally demonstrate how we should live in Krishna consciousness. He studied the life of Prabhupada, both on what he said and what the personality of Prabhupada also will gain so much transcendental happiness and will appreciate who this person is and at the same time will learn so much about ourselves. There are so many books about the life of Prabhupada along with whatever he gave us in his books too. Yes, Maharaj, thank you so much. Uh, recently, I was reading the book Miracle on the Second Avenue by Mukunda Goswami. And, I mean, it's, uh, we can't, uh, so he's writing the conditions in which Srila Prabhupada lived in Bovary and, and in, before moving to Second Avenue without mincing words. And it's so, uh, I mean, heart touching to see what all he underwent to give us uh, this Krishna consciousness. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a miracle that unfolded and it's still unfolding. 
Yes. But Prabhupada did is not has never been done before. He's taken Krishna consciousness everywhere around the world. He he went through he showed that whether you're Australian, American, um, Indian, or any European, any whatever whatever's your culture, whatever your background, whatever your gender, whatever uh, you know, situation you are, you live in, you can be Krishna conscious. We cut through all of the uh, the externals and went right to the essence. He he did something. He created a spiritual united nation, which the world has been trying to do for hundreds of years trying to unite people based on, you know, the idea that we're all human beings and we have similar interests, but they don't have the formula for unity. The uni formula for unity is we're all part and parcel of Krishna. We all have a loving relationship with Krishna. We're all looking for that happiness that comes by that relationship with Krishna. He went to the essence of the living being's existence and not to try to amalgamate the externals and call that unity. <laughs> Wonderful answer, Maharaj. So true. Very, very true. Very true. We have a request um, from Vrindavan uh, Das Prabhuji. He's saying that on such an auspicious day of Srila Haridas Thakur's disappearance day, may we have darshan of your Haridas Thakur Maharaj to get his blessings. I don't know if you have this picture or. Yeah, he's right here. He's listening to the program. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I can do that. Um, but I think we should do that as the very last thing. So are we finished? If we're finished, then we can end with Srila Haridas Thakur, which would be the best way to end. <laughs> Definitely. Any last okay. minute questions, devotees? Okay, here we go. I can move my computer, but hang on. Let me know if you can see. Mataji, you can spotlight only Maharaj so we can see him. Can you see? One second. Um, I hope everyone is on. Yes, Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. That's Takur Ki Jai. How's that? Very yeah. nice. I'm trying to. Thank you, Maharaj. Mataji, is everyone able to see Maharaj? And I mean, Srila Haridas Thakur? Yes. Okay. Yes, Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. He told me to tell you that. We should all chat. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving us the darshan. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for this Thank blessing, so this wonderful yeah. blessing of Darshan of Haridas Chakra. Thank you so much. We will end the call now. Vancha Kalpata Rubhyasya Kripa. Vancha Kripa Sintu Bhadi Vacha Kripati Dana Pavni Bhiyo Vaishnav Vrindu Ki Jai. 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 Jai.